friends, I got another example for you. Another frame problem. Okay, this is going to be a little bit different than the last one. This one has a distributed load on it. So this may be like a, uh, a billboard on the side of the road and there's a wind load blowing on there. Okay, and they want us to find the size of the wind load. So how big is that? I'll show you how to do that. And then the ident see if there's any two force members in this in this uh, this uh, frame, and then find the force acting on DEF. And DEF is this member right here. Okay. And we're going to remember our little recipe over here for how to solve frame problems. Okay. Find global equilibrium where possible, and this is one of those problems. Okay. Step two: take the frame apart, but remember, don't draw two force members because they don't tell us anything. And then uh, last step, solve it. So how good are you at drawing free body diagrams? You better be pretty good because you have to be to solve frame problems. Okay, so let's get started on this. Let's start with global equilibrium. Okay, so the, the global equilibrium, I always tell my students that this is a potato, okay? So just think of this thing as a big rigid body, okay? And what is it? It's pin connected, pin connected, right? So down here at the bottom, it's pin connected, pin connected, okay? So this is a A Y A X, and this is a F Y F X. Don't get concerned with what's going on inside of here and this member and the pin connections and the, no, it's just a big old rigid body. And this big old rigid body has this distributed load on it. And I'm going to show you how to simplify that into nothing more than just one concentrated load. And that's it. Okay. So that's all there is to this. Okay. Um, now, how, why did I put those arrows on there? Number one, uh, I don't know about X. I just guessed it. I don't, that's, that's obviously not right. Maybe I should have guessed them both the other way. Okay. Maybe they both go this way. I don't know, okay? But I know that um, this thing wants to rock over, so it's driving this one into the ground, this side over here. So the ground is pushing back up, and it's pulling this one off the ground as it goes over, right? It's lifting this up, so the ground has to pull down. So I'm pretty sure those directions are right. These two, I don't know. So how do I find that, okay? A, just a concentrated load, the way you find it, if this thing is 80 pounds per feet, then the first thing I need to do is find out how many feet of it I have, okay? So I know that this is 10 degrees. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Ah, if I, this whole thing right here, uh, these are on the same line, okay? These two things are on the same line. So this distance right there is what? Well, this angle here is 30, so I have this triangle that looks like this, right? This is 30 degrees, and this down here is 20, and I'm looking for that little over there, that side over there. So I know, I know the adjacent side, and I need the opposite side. That sounds like a, a job for tangent, right? So tan 30 is equal to opposite over adjacent. And I don't know off the top of my head what the tangent of 30 is. Okay, tan 30 is square root of 3 over 3 times 20. And then don't give me that in a, give me, there you go, 11.55. Okay, so now that I know that, then I know this, don't I? Because <clears throat> if that's 11.55, then similar triangles, right? If that's 10 and that's 10, then this must be half, right? So this down, down to here, well, that wasn't very good, was it? Down to there is half of 11.55. So divided by two is 5.77. Okay, so 5.77, plus 10 plus, oh, we got to go again down over here, don't we? Whatever that is. Is that the same triangle? It's 30 degrees. It's the same 10. Uh, it's the same, isn't it? That's uh, 5.77 also. So 
The distributed load height here is what? 10 plus 10 plus 5.77 times 2. So 21.55. Okay, so if that distributed load is 80 pounds per feet and there's 21.55 feet of it, how big is the load, right? Times 80 equals 1,723.76, 1,723.8 1 pounds, okay? And if it's evenly distributed, right? If I want to apply a single concentrated load across this whole distributed load, where would I apply it? Well, it's like where would you balance that load on your finger? It's a rectangle, so where's the middle of a rectangle? Right in the middle, right? Right in the middle. So that distance um, from B, right, is uh, half of 21.55. So divide it uh, 21.55 divided by 2 is 10.775. So this, the middle of this from here, this guy, 10.78, okay, feet. So the hardest part about this problem is just working out all these distances. The problem itself is not hard. Okay, so let's look at this. This is what I have, right? Do you see a problem here? I see a problem. Do you see a problem? The problem is this. There are one, two, three, four unknowns on a 2D problem. Because 2D problems have the sum of the force in the x, the sum of the force in the y, and a moment, that's three equations, and I got four unknowns. So right here, I gotta find equilibrium when possible. It's not gonna be possible to find all equilibrium, okay? But, but, right? If I take the moment at A, Okay, if I take the moment at A, what am I going to get? Well, Fx is knocked out, so that one goes away. I'm going to find Fy, and maybe that just one little piece of the puzzle is the one piece that I need to solve the whole thing. So I say, when you can get some of it, get some of it. You may not be able to get all the global equilibrium, but just that one little piece is all you need to get, you know, maybe the problem solved. So first off, I've got Fy, which rotates me positive. Fy times how far away? So here's point A. How far is it to Fy? 20. Okay. Good. And then what's next? The 1723 rotates me negative, minus 1723, <coughs> excuse me, point 8, right, times how far away from here? to there, right, is this little distance here, 5.77. We already did that too, didn't we? So from, from, from uh, A to the middle is 5.7, oh, is what? Um, oh, 10.78 plus 5.77, which, let me get my calculator back out. I don't know what that is. 10.78 plus... 5.77 equals 16.55, okay? So you got to understand where these distances are coming from, okay? Because that's probably the hardest thing on this problem is just they didn't give me the distances straight away. I had to calculate them, okay? So I've got this little equation here. So times 1723.8 equals and then divided by 20. All right, so Fy, Fy, uh, I'll put it here, Fy is equal to 1426.44, okay? So, I know how big this concentrated load is, and all I'm doing on, I just take a distributed load, turn it into a concentrated load. That's all you got to do. So that was uh, 1723.8. 1723.8 pounds. All right, I'm just going to leave that there because I'm going to erase this free body because I need the room to solve this problem. So that, now, and then looking at this free body diagram, what do you know? That Fy equals Ay, right? Because the up stuff has to equal the down stuff. 
So equals a y. Okay. So those two, those things are all true. All right. We're ready for the next step, which is step number two. Draw the free body diagrams of the pieces when I blow this frame apart. Now, what about this one, number two? Identify two force members. All right. I'm going to ask you this again. What's a two force member? Pin connected at both ends. No forces in the middle. Do you see one? How about A, E? No, there's something in the middle of it. How about this one? No, there's something. How about that one? There's a force in the middle. How about that? Oh, yeah. C, D. Okay. So member C, D is the only two force member in this problem. Okay. So that's the one member that we're not going to draw a picture of. All right. Let's see what we got. All right, let's get us some room so we can draw those free bodies. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll just put, um, yeah, I'm going to write this a little higher so I can use that room. FY equals 1426.44 pounds equals AY, right? So I'm going to use all this board space here. Okay, so we did step one. Okay. Here we go. Next thing. All right. Here's the here's the free bodies that we have to draw. Okay. Um. There's this guy. Oh, that's not good, is it? Okay. That's the this guy here, which was a C. Point C. Point B. Okay. Then there's the one at the angle. Okay, that's A, B, E. There's A, B, E. And then there's this one here, right? The one that goes straight up and down over there. <coughs> F, E, D. He is fed. All right. This is the point of the video where you have to do this. Everything is all about this next step. If you don't get this right, we're just going to practice this over and over and over until you get it. Push pause on the video, draw me some arrows on this, and when we come back, I'll draw it, and we'll see if we get the same thing. Ready? Push pause. Are you back? Okay. Here we go. I'm going to help you. Let's see if we get the same thing. Okay. Let's start off by, I'm going to put those global equal, no, yeah, yeah, that's all right. I'm going to put this load on here because I know where that goes, right? Whoop. That's this guy here, 1723.8. And that's the only external load on the whole entire system, okay? Now I'm going to put those global equilibriums that we found, okay? Because over here we had, uh, uh, right, and I said, I just assumed AX, I don't know, and then I had AY going down was right there, 1426.4, okay? And then F, same thing, F, he was going up, 1426.4, and then there was an FX that I didn't know, I couldn't find, okay? So there's all the the reaction forces and the global put on there that we found originally. Now, what else? Okay. Point B. What is point B? That's like a pin connection, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Okay. So, okay. Pin connection. Here we go. Pin, pin. B, Y, B, X. Pin, pin. B, Y, B, X. And my advice to you is don't put any arrows on it right now. Let's see if we can't figure out which way they go and put them on here in a minute, okay? So I didn't put any arrows on there yet. I'm going to, okay? Point E. Point E looks like, that looks like a pin connection to me, okay? So, uh, uh, E, X, E, Y. Oh, here's the, here he is again. E, X, E, Y. Okay. Got you. Okay. What's going on right there? 
Two force member. Okay. Now, do you have an idea if that this guy up here is going to be in tension or compression? Is he going to be squeezed or is he going to be stretched? I think as the wind blows, it's kind of crushing that a little bit. I think he's going to be in compression. And a compression member wants to push back on it, doesn't it? So here's what I think. At point C, I've got this. Okay? I'm going to call that FCD. Okay? And on the other end of that, which is over here, over there, right? He's pushing on point D, like that, right? I, I don't have enough room. I'm going to... Ooh, I'm going to draw it like that. Is that okay? So remember, if it's on the line of action, if I take it over there and put it over there, it's the same thing as a push force. Move it over there, it's a pull force, right? But it's the same net force. And that's F, C, D, okay? Okay, let's see if we can figure out which way these arrows go, okay? Look, if I take the mental moment about this point F, right? Mental moment then EY gets knocked out, and then this guy rotates me, uh, that's clockwise, so EX needs to rotate me, uh, counterclockwise, <laughs> okay? And so if EX goes that way, where's the other EX? Where is he? Where is he? There he is. He has to go the other way up here, okay? Um, let's see. Is there any of these I can figure out? Um... If I take the moment in my head here, right, then this guy rotates me clockwise, so that guy has to rotate with me counterclockwise. No, he rotates counterclockwise, so he needs to rotate clockwise, right? So the other BX is up there. He has to go that way. And then this guy goes up, so BY needs to go down. And if BY goes down there, BY goes up there. Oh, look at this. We're just getting it, aren't we? Um, and then what? Can we figure out EY? The last one is EY. Uh, I don't know, right? I got up stuff. I got down stuff. I got left stuff. I don't know, right? Can we guess? The answer is yes, but here's the trick. I'm just going to guess, right? I'm going to guess, um, I think it's down. I'm going to guess down there but what do I do here on this one? I can't guess down on that one as well. I have to guess up. Mm -mm. Okay? They have to be different. They have to be. So, now I think I have... So, and if I saw VY and I get a negative, then that means... I know I guessed on it, right? If I get a negative, I guess wrong. So, I'll fix it. All right, so I have three free body diagrams. Did you get them exactly like that? Or at least close? <laughs> You have to have it just like this, okay? I'll, I will, I'll let you slide if you had one of your arrows the wrong way, but you got to at least have all those arrows on there. If you don't, you won't get this solved right, okay? So free body number one, free body number two, free body number three, okay? Now you have to ask yourself, we got, we're down to this step, solve. Which one of these free bodies are you going to start with? Which one can I find something on? Mm. Number one. If I take number one here, if I take the moment here, I'm going to find FCD, right? Woohoo! Let's do that. Okay. FCD has two components, right? This is FCD cos 30. This is FCD sine 30. Okay, yes, because this is a 30 degree angle, it's given. Okay, so the sum of the moments about point B equals 1723.8, which is, oh, that's negative, minus 1738. Dang, I didn't even get that close, did I? 1723.8. Times how far away from point B? Um, 10.78. Okay. And then, oh, cha-cha force. What cha Right? He goes through point B. So I just got this one, which rotates me mm, positive. So plus 
FCD, cos 30, times how far away, hey, shoo, excuse me, from B all the way to C. From B to C is, oh, what did we say? Um, 10.78 times 2, right? Yes. Which I can't remember how much that is. Okay. 10.78 times 2, 21.56. Okay. So that equals 0 is going to give us FCD, right? So here we go. 1723.8 times 10.78. Equals divided by 21.56 equals divided by the cosine of 30. 995.2. Okay, so now we know FCD. 995.2. Ooh, he's somewhere else too, isn't he? He's right there. 995.2. Okay. Groovy. Okay, I see some other stuff I can solve for. I'm going to go ahead and get, um, do I need BX and BY? Let's see. You know, they only wanted me to solve for, remember, DEF. Here's DEF right? Um, if I take the moment at F, won't I find EX? Yes. Okay. So on this free body right here, now that I know FCD, some of the moments about point F equals what? So I'm taking the moment here, okay? Okay, so what do I have? I have uh, EX rotating me positive. E X times how far away from F up to E from F up to E is uh, is that I don't know how much that is I've only done this three times 5.77 times 2 11.54 okay and then what uh, this guy again two components okay and only this one, which rotates me negative, so that guy is minus 995.2 times the cosine of 30 times, times what? I'm erasing that. Oh, no. Times how far away from F up to D. From F up to D is 11.54 plus 10 more. So 21.54, okay? Ooh, that's gonna give us EX, isn't it? Okay, let's see. 21.54, 995.2 times the cosine of 30 equals times 21.54 equals divided by 11.54 equals 1608.7. Okay, so now we know you. All right. The rest is going to be easy here, right? Because I can do now the sum of the force in the X. And what do I have in the X? Uh, I have that guy, 995.2 times the cosine of 30. Who else is in the X? This guy, minus 1608.7. And then that guy, minus FX. Okay. So... And remember, on FX, I totally guessed, right? I totally guessed the direction, right? When I was doing global equilibrium, right, I guessed them both that way. So these two, BX and FX, I guessed them. It looks like it's going to be negative, doesn't it? 
So I get, um, what am I going to get? 995.2 times the cosine of 30 equals, and then minus 16, uh oh, 1608.7 equals negative 746.83. Okay, so fx negative 746.8. Okay, and all you would have to put here on this one, right, on this guy is, I'm going to put it right here, assumed wrong, that's not how you spell wrong, wrong direction on FBD, right? So we just assumed the wrong direction, but that's the right answer for FX. Okay, so now we know FX. You know what? There's only one thing left, and that's EY. If we come back and do the sum of the force in the Y, we got EY, right? It's the last thing to find. Okay, so here I'm going to come way up here. Sum of the force in the Y. And in the Y direction, what do we have? I have 1426.4. And remember, EY, we guessed EY too, didn't we? We didn't know, so I don't know if it's going to be right or not. Plus EY. And then that guy, right? Minus 995.2 sine of 30. Okay? Yep, EY is going to be backwards, isn't it? So 995.2 um, times sine of 30, which is 0.5. Okay, and then what minus... 1426.4. So I get negative 920 EY. Negative 928.8 pounds. So I also got get the, the wrong direction on that one as well, right? I assumed the wrong direction on FX. And EY, right? If you want, you can go back and change it. EY actually goes down, and FX actually goes to the right. Okay? But that's it, right? Now, what's missing? Did we not find everything? We never found BX and BY, right? But I could come back to this free body if they asked me for it, right? I already know that. I know that. So that's the only thing missing. That's just the sum of the forces in the X and the Y on this free body, and I got BX and BY. And then the only thing I didn't find was, uh, what is AX? But, go back to global equilibrium, right? We have one more equation. We could have written the forces in the X from global and found AX. So, there you go. We found the things they were looking for, which is what's going on on this bar right here, right? D, E, F. We know F, FX, FY from global. We found that guy and that guy, and we found the tension in that two-force member. So, that's it. That's a pretty tough frame problem. The hardest part students will typically have, what are the, the dimensions over here? A little bit of trig. We can knock it out. All right, gang. I'll see you next time.